South Florida is known for its beaches, its nightlife, and its diversity. Qualities that have attracted filmmakers for decades. When people think Miami, they think of an exciting, international paradise, multicultural. South Florida is, is just a great backdrop, and that's what attracts people. We have amazing crew, we have beautiful light, we have uh, diverse locations. Miami has its own its sexiness. South Florida is a preferred location for most people to shoot because of the weather and, the, and they just like coming here. So how much do we really know about production in South Florida? I don't think uh, Florida has any future in the film industry outside of being visited from time to time for a music video or a commercial. There's been talks about studios for the last 20 years. Bottom line is people don't come here to be inside. They come here to be outside. There's a real crisis. A prime spot for filming beauty and glamour at its finest. So why has production in South Florida died out? Our community was built on uh, a history of television production. Obviously, you know, we, going back many years, decades ago, we, we had lots of feature films. We've had the industry in Florida and South Florida since General Ben and Flipper. So it's been a long, this is an industry that's been here for a long period of time. Through the years, whether it was Frank Sinatra, and then we had a television boom, which really kind of built this infrastructure in the first place. But it really took off in the 1980s with Miami Vice. And that's the show that really made this community what it was, really trained an entire generation that continues to work in this community and continues to educate and train a new generation. After the Miami Vice years, everybody wanted to be here, all the Europeans wanted to be here. The modeling world came to South Florida, specifically South Beach. Uh, it became a playground in the process, but a lot of production happened here. We, we got teased by some very, very good years of the best of the best, and they really were here. Uh, but they, it didn't stick and over the years it has continuously diminished. You have to be used to change if you live in a place like Florida. Later on, movies like Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, Too Fast, Too Furious, and many commercials and music videos would keep the industry going. We really took off again with serious television, and that's been our focal point. So shows like Burn Notice and Magic City really are the focal point of what we want to see. Not a whole lot compared to four years ago when we had five or six shows here and big films. Yeah. It's pretty much, I'm gonna tell you right now, an edict in Hollywood that you're not gonna shoot anything unless you're getting tax incentive money. Over the past decade, a tax incentive program has been put in place to attract filmmakers to Florida. We first got in the game of tax incentive in 2004. Starting with a smaller rebate program that we did as a pilot program to try to get, to try to work with, to, uh, you know, productions to come in here. Florida did have a program that started in 2010 that was uh, basically from 2010 to through 2016 a $296 million incentive program that incentivizes only uh, expenditures, Florida expenditures, and Florida hires. It's an easy formula for every $100,000 of tax incentive money you get $275,000 worth of actual hard cash coming into the city. And there are over 40 states now that have uh, very robust incentive programs, including Georgia, which is one of the strongest programs in the country, and obviously they're our neighbor to the north. So it's had a very big impact on us in terms of drawing away some of the infrastructure that we've worked five decades to build. Unfortunately, we ran out of money because of the way it was doled out. The minute uh, the big player studios, networks, find out there's money for production, they come in and gobble it up. That's the reason Florida will suffer. As far as the film industry, Florida will not be a player in the film industry as long as this continues. It's just very, very difficult to justify spending money on subsidizing a film industry when you have education problems and you have street problems and you have you know, poverty problems. We are right now working on trying to uh, educate the state on the importance of this industry to, so that we, they can put more money back into the program and we continue this program to continue bringing production here and building the industry. We have to wonder whether, if they don't pass this incentive, if it's worth continuing to pursue these larger productions that are desperate for our incentive. When maybe the thing to do is to support these lower budget filmmakers, these emerging filmmakers, and watch their careers blossom. We also want to take care of everybody in the industry and the independents because 
they deserve it. They live here. They deserve a shot at that money too. So how can we help South Florida independent filmmakers? We're working on trying to find ways to, to, to find whether it be grants or find any other way to help the independent filmmaker stay and work here to tell Miami stories. There's such a hunger for, for Miami to be a bigger film town, particularly the filmmakers are like very eager. And the fact that we are in a unique spot does allow us to have particularly unique stories. Everybody thinks that Miami is, um, that is the same, um, you know, it's the same 15 streets, but it's not like there's a lot of like stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff, you know, there's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of like shootings. There's a lot of like Everglades, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I think that we need to take that. We shouldn't take that for granted and shoot in those places as well. You go to a lot of other cities and all the indie theaters are closing, but Miami's one of those places where indie theaters here are opening. Filmgate is, we're a nonprofit organization, and so we're kind of dedicating ourselves to building the film community here, uh, specifically more indie filmmakers. We bring in more of the community each month um, to kind of help our filmmakers connect with other people. So we really try and help our filmmakers through like the maximum amount of channels <laughs> in Miami. For such a beautiful touristic destination and the amount of culture that we have in our city, we it's slow. Miami has a season just like pretty much every other city. Anything like past the beginning of June is like pretty much our dead season. So then that's what sp spawns the Miami filmmakers to say, hey, you're not working, but I have this feature film that's a horror movie and I'm going to pay you like this amount of money. And I know it's like, like half of half of what you make for real, but um, you know, help us out. All those Miami filmmakers, those guys have a day job. Those are the same guys that in the summer, like myself are like, hey, like let's get together and let's make something. Miami Boheme came about because uh, I've been a Miami music lover ever, you know, since I was born. Like my dad always put on like Miami records and stuff when I was a little kid. The, the people that follow that movement are very, like very small compared to everybody else. So I mean, the movement is growing now, but, and you know, the whole thing was about giving the movement a name. And that's where Miami Boheme came from. The strongest man is about a Cuban-American construction worker who considers himself the strongest man in the world. The story kind of came about because I would visit uh, my friends here in Miami. I feel like I wrote Miami itself as a character in the film. At first when I started writing it wasn't my intention, you know, it was just this is the place where the characters all live. But then as I wrote more and more it kind of became a character in the film because the things that happen in Miami are so specific to Miami. You can't just replicate the full experience of, of a Miami or Miami Beach, and that's what keeps us, frankly, uh, operating and working in the game. It's a good place to shoot. The light is great, you know, the weather is great. Miami, the name, has a certain uh, strength to it, so people will always tap into that if they want to, uh, you know, extend a message into the movie. Shooting in Miami, I guess I just wanted to show the city, the real city, you know, the city that I live in, the city that, you know, that everyone here lives in, not the city that Hollywood portrays Miami to be. We have so many filmmakers and, and people in the city that need work, and even though we deal with a collective that's aspiring filmmakers, at one point they're going to get to that level where they're going to need incentives to create stories in South Florida. Helps our economy, helps us all. You know, we want to listen to them and hear their thoughts because you know, I think sometimes they feel like they're not heard and, and we want to make sure that they're part of our community moving forward. It's the hardest part of making movies, I think, is finding money, you know, because it takes a lot of money to make a film and that's always the struggle. If there's going to be any subsidizing of anything, it should be for the small independent features uh, or, or, or shorts or documentaries. If we do get a tax incentive, we'll probably see the benefit of that in two years. I am, I am cautiously optimistic that we will have a program. According to the Miami Herald, Florida lawmakers are working out new ways to fund and run a new incentive program. Miami's film scene is evolving, and these artists and creatives are helping shape the future of Miami film production.